Um, good afternoon. We have a guest uh, with us today uh, for the last half of the last day, a business colleague partner of uh, Bavarian Bob uh, and I in the uh, solar business, uh, alternative energy business, uh, Clive Hyman, who uh, I affectionately refer to as Cambridge Clive, because uh, he went to Cambridge. He also went to Christ College, but it doesn't sound right, Christ Cambridge Clive or Cambridge Christ Clive. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, that will be with us and uh, be with us in our graduation dinner. Um, the I was thinking of something. I was reading the um, LinkedIn's and Facebooks and <clears throat> emails uh, before I came over, and um, I was also uh, showing. Uh, the office who the pictures of because I said that last night I remembered more people that belong in the Hall of Fame as we talk about them I remember the pictures so uh, I was just verifying this guy is this guy and for Kim so she can put him in frames and put him up but at the same time <clears throat> I thought of something <laughs> this is in my office it hangs prominently over my door as you walk in or you walk out. Not everybody notices it. This was presented to me August 9th, 1979. The day before my 34th birthday. 55, 65, 75. 34th birthday. Just to make sure. Um, the age of a couple of you in here, more or less. And it says to present it to the hatchet man. And this along with this, which I've talked about already, and a couple other things, are my most prized possessions. But why did I get that from uh, <clears throat> the corporate leaders and colleagues that I was in business with at the time? I got it because I was sent naively <clears throat> on a mission to the middle of the United States to extract us from a deal. Very much like Marcus, the beat up used, uh, used uh, world former world class athlete that only uh, gives me a layer at a time about a deal. And there's really 46 layers and he only gives me the first two or three. When I was sent there <clears throat> many years ago, I was only told the surface stuff. So I got in a corporate plane and I landed in Wausau, Wisconsin. When I got when the plane opened in Wausau, Wisconsin, the humidity was so heavy that at that in those days I had a Samsonite overnight bag. The water formed on the Samsonite Samsonite plastic uh, case. I get out, hit the tarmac, <clears throat> walk to the car. There was no car there to pick me up, and I'm you know what the hell? Well, Wausau, Wisconsin airport's not very big. It makes Dundee airport look big. <laughs> So I uh, get out, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, I'm trying to make a phone call. Uh, and in 1979, I didn't have a mobile, uh, cell phone. But, but shortly thereafter, the cell phones were about this big, they were bricks, but I didn't have one. And then, um, uh, finally somebody came to pick me up. And it was a guy, a big guy, bigger than me. And he said, uh, did so-and-so send you? And I said, yes. He said, well, let me take you to the hotel. So I go to the hotel. And it wasn't a hotel, it was like a motel. And uh, we're sitting in the, they didn't have a bar in the motel, they didn't have anything. It was just a motel. And uh, I think if I remember correctly, it cost like 30 bucks a night or 35 bucks a night. And he's explaining to me the deal. So now a couple other layers come off what I'm there to do. Contrary to the guys from Century City in the entertainment business, I headed up an entertainment company then. I had left Bear Stearns and I headed up an entertainment company. And our offices were in the Twin Towers in Century City. Twin Towers, and we had the penthouse in one of those triangle towers in Century City. And um, so he's explaining to me what the rest of the deal. He gets through seven or eight or more, nine more layers of the deal. And I said, uh, I'm thinking to myself, well, I wouldn't even get in a fucking plane if I'd known all this to come here. Knowing that the guys that sent me already knew all this information. But I'm dispensable. I'm cannon fodder. Doesn't make a fuck. They didn't expect me to come back. The next morning I get arrested. 
The jet confiscated, impounded, thrown in jail. Now, a few more layers of the deal come off. And so finally, I think more or less, kind of 70-80%, I know what the deal is. And the guy that had picked me up at the airport, ostensibly who was my buddy, was the guy that was, he was a former football coach, high school football coach, of my business partner, who got in the deal and misrepresented the deal to begin with. So um, I'm in uh, jail, I get out of jail, I get some sort of a uh, rick, they let me out. And I'm, uh, they have a, uh, not a judge, but a, um, like a sheriff, a local sheriff, who's uh, hearing the case and is going to adjudicate it, supposedly. Well, as soon as I saw this guy, and I saw them all huddled in a corner, I knew I was fucked. Okay? I'm there, they're over there, my lawyer's even over there. I got a lawyer, uh, is over there, so I said, well, how bad can it be, I asked myself. Well, I don't ask that question anymore. I never ask myself, again, how bad can it be? I just assume the worst, okay? Um, and the, um, I'm there and they say that uh, I, I, they, they have seven or eight charges, one of which is securities fraud, one of which was um, uh, uh, tampering, uh, breaking and entering, all kinds of different stuff that, um, that when you think about what had really happened, not by my hand, they were more or less maybe 50-50 uh, warranted against somebody, not me. Not me, not this kid. So make a long story short, and the reason why I got that when I came back, well, number one, I came back, and I often think that they sent me in the little jet because they didn't expect ever to get the jet back again. Because in those days, you could buy a little Imajet, uh, a citation I used to call Imajet, because remember I told you how the seagulls flew faster than my plane? Well, that, that was it. Uh, and in those days, you could buy them for six, seven hundred thousand um, dollars, and so they just would write it off. And um, I got us out of the deal. I got the plane back. Uh, I threatened uh, to do some things, uh, which I would never say on YouTube. Uh, and um, I came back. I came back on a Friday, and I landed about six, or four or five o'clock uh, Saturday morning. And so I didn't see anybody until that Monday after lunch. And um, I came back and um, I told him that I had these papers signed and I had extracted this from the transaction and all this. And the um, first question they wanted to ask, but they didn't, they asked later, well, how did you do that? They wanted to know. And I said, it's not important. Uh, then the lawyers asked, what's our liability? What did you promise? So now it's flipped full circle. It's gone from, they didn't give a fuck if I ever came back, one. They didn't expect me to come back, two. Now they're worried what I could have possibly agreed to that let me off the hook, that they took, let me out of jail. They let me come with a plane. And I, you know, I wasn't beat up or anything. So then it flipped and they wanted to know, well, what did you promise, Dan? What did, I mean, uh, you didn't have any authority to act for us there. So she kept on moving, like a, like a Bauer deal. The deal kept moving. Now I had no authority to make any deals. You're liable for those deals if you made them, Dan. That's your fucking money, not ours. And it kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Then I said, fine. You, you keep the deal, you know... What I agreed to or what I didn't agree to, the bottom line is I got this paper signed, and that's the only signed document. So if I were you and if I had a half a brain, notwithstanding you're in the entertainment business, and that means you got shit for brains, and I was the only non-Jew in the deal, I might add for the two Jewish guys in the room, because the entertainment business was all Jewish, and that, although I'm, I'm told it's the same thing. You can't hold this against me. It's a fucking mitzvah. It's a fucking miracle. I got this signed. Okay. A couple of weeks go by, I come into the office. I didn't go to the office, I just assumed I was going to be doing something else. Didn't go to the office. And this is on my desk. Because uh, this was maybe in June, end of June, beginning of July, and they, they gave me this. Uh, coincidentally, they fucked it up. They thought it was on my birthday, because my birthday's August 10th. They gave it to me on August 9th. The hatchet man 
and now like 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 the um, the driver to uh, uh, Caesar when he's coming in to, to the stadium in Rome and they're all cheering glorious fleeting okay so now I'm, I'm being carried around like I'm Jesus not Jesus Christ because they crucified him but like like somebody important and when I when I deal with people and you guys and deals quite often and it's really important when you're dealing with your dream team and your chairman and all these other people that we talked about ad nauseum that you give them all the facts a hundred percent of the facts the first time around now all of us forget I don't forget anything but a lot of people forget things but we forget conveniently and we normally forget to make it not look as bad on us that made the initial or original decisions but when you send the people off not like cannon fodder and you know I was teasing Marcus about the deal how it changed five or six or seven layers extra that I had to keep selling to get my way out of it made me think of this where I got the hatchet man award in 1979 but the good news is this was more or less the beginning of my success is as limited as it was in the entertainment business because then they thought I can get them out of anything. And I weaseled my way into 50% ownership of the company. 50%. That's why when I talk about 50, I've been there. I've done it. And um, although my entertainment industry uh, life cycle was short-lived, maybe three and a half, four years, and, uh, but, and, I, and I, we made movies with Richard Harris, Karen Black, Martin Landau, Dolly Parton, Hoyt Axton, um, Tony Curtis, um, Robert Goulet, and a bunch of people, we made bupkis. Bupkis. Because in those days, I didn't know the difference between net and gross. I learned the hard way the difference between net and gross. And for those of you on YouTube, if you're any of you in the entertainment industry, you don't want any net deals, any net profits or net income. You want gross off the top in points. One, two, five percent, whatever. Uh, and uh, rumor has it that the guy that made the Da Vinci, what do you call it? What's the name of the guy? Vinci Code. What was the name of the actor? Uh, uh, Hanks. Tom Hanks. Supposedly got 15 points in the movie. I don't know if he did or not. If he got 15 points in the movie, that was a big grossing movie. So he got super rich, if, if that's true. Um, but. Um, are there any questions on anything so far that we've covered? Any, any other role play questions that we had? They had me do this role play earlier when it wasn't on YouTube um, about a deal that uh, Marcus uh, is interested in and I answered. Are there any more questions on that? Okay, well, we'll see you guys tonight. Thank you very much.